Oh my goodness. What are you doing outside here? Oh, it's so cold. Come in with me. Oh, come to my desk. Here it's nice and warm. <laughs> Hello, sweetie. You are back. <laughs> Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel, Junk Journal Art. Nice to see you here. Thank you very much for joining me today on a very exciting day. <laughs> what you can see here on my desk is my blind date journal that just arrived. Susanne has created the menu in my journal and has sent it back to me. And it took a really, really long time. So we both thought that this package uh, got lost or something like that so I'm so happy that this finally arrived and I'm so excited to open this <sighs> yeah <laughs> so this is really really strange because this has this um, packaging tape here and this says ich habe Hände I have hands yeah I'm a lucky girl <laughs> And here it says something like sorry but with this letter and that's obviously because it's, it was cut here but now it says ich habe sorry Hände I have sorry hands <laughs> I had to laugh about this so loud because that's so strange and that's really funny and I think Susanne um, hasn't thought about this sentence or perhaps she has thought about it but I can't understand it <coughs> but I would be really really curious on what this tape actually said I mean <laughs> what's that I have already opened this so that I can take this out now really easily <laughs> Welcome back, my Jonathan. Um, okay, so let's open this. This has a little letter here. Es war sehr schön im Schwarzwald, aber jetzt freue ich mich wieder bei dir zu sein. Viele Grüße von der Bollenhutfrau soll ich ausrichten. Um, it was really nice in the Black Forest, um, but, ye but jetzt. <laughs> Sorry, translation failed. But now... Um, I'm happy to be with you again. Many greetings from Mrs. Bollenhut. Um, I mean, this means mm, this journal has written this letter and it says that it should say many greetings from Mrs. Bollenhut to me. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so let's take that out and I'm really excited to see how these things that I have already seen in Susanna's videos look in reality. I mean, it's of course totally different um, to see something in a video or in reality. And yeah, the first thing I'm really um, surprised about is that this journal is still relatively flat. I mean, you know Susanne and you know how she is creating her stuff. I've expected an alligator mouth after this first exchange. <laughs> so I'm happy that it <laughs> looks like this. So when we open this, we have this interesting paper here. What's that? Ich bin ein Verklebungsschutzpapier. Du darfst mich auch verwenden. And I don't know if Susanne has thought about writing this word. Obviously not, because I have to translate that now for you in English. <laughs> so, <laughs> first of all, this is not a German word that you can find in a dictionary. It's some kind of a joke word that she has built out of several words. Verklebungs is something like... Mm, when you use glue, something is glued together. Schutz is something like protection and papier is paper, of course. So that means you can use this to protect something when you are gluing something. I don't know what she is saying to me, even if this is German. I don't know what I have to do with this. 
but she says that I may use it. For what? I don't know. She has joked about me when I wrote um, to her last menu this word Kringelige Kartonkroketten. That's also a word that I have built by myself. It's something like a round, snaky, um, cardboard croquette. Cro <laughs> croquette. I don't know the English word. It's normally it's this hmm, small um, things that you can eat. They are made out of potatoes. And it was a word where I thought she has much to think about that. And uh, I wanted to, I wanted her creativity to flow. But <laughs> that obviously was a fail because she had to call me and ask what she has to do. And I think um, I have to call her as well because I don't know what's a Verklebungsschutzpapier. I have no idea. Okay, so um, before I read the new menu, let's check... Um, the pages, oh, here's the first one that she has created. So here she made this cool pocket and this looks so much more interesting and it feels so cool in reality than it was in her video. I mean, when I show it to you now, of course, you can't feel what I feel and I think the camera can't catch what I can see and that's, yeah, some kind of a sad feeling, but it's like it is that's strange but this looks so cool and i love this material that she has used here so cool and first of all i thought i gave her a really great color palette for this journal i mean i've used barbara's papers here in those green tones i've used gold and brown and that stuff a tiny little bit of yellow perhaps here and there um, and this music paper, it's a nice color palette. And what is Susanne doing? She's using blue. The color that totally doesn't fit into this journal. <laughs> when I saw her video and she created those blue things, I thought, oh my gosh, please don't do that. Blue is not matching this journal. When I see this now on this page, I think it fits to the page. Um, but I think we have to make some color bridges to make that for me fit totally so let's see um here <clears throat> in this little envelope she gave me this paper thank you Susanna. i'm really happy that um she has put this in here because this blue i guess is something like this or no she has printed barbara's paper here that cannot be the same blue but i think that matches each other so that we perhaps can use this to make something like a color bridge. And of course it's nice to have a paper to work with or to write on. So I always like when those pocket thingies have some papers in it. So that you can use this as a hidden journaling spot or whatever. Okay, so let's go to the next page that she has created. And <laughs> I was really excited if she perhaps made some surprises for me as well i have put some surprise in her journal and obviously here is nothing but <laughs> so i mean no surprise is in here until now but perhaps that's good because i think surprise in susanna's world can also mean um scribbling around with a black woody pen and <laughs> Perhaps she she wants to surprise me in not such a positive way, so she could take her black woody pen and scribble around everywhere. That would be a surprise as well. So I'm happy with my pages that they come came back like I have sent them to her. <laughs> so here we have one of the pockets that she has created with this menu that I have sent to her. This looks really, really cute. And also with this braille paper, this is so cool. This is an, a really great um, way to make a tiny pocket. And she has put this little thing inside. So um, for all of you who are new here or mm, who have missed uh, the other videos, Susanne has explained this in her video. And of course, she has explained it in German. So I would like to try to um, explain that in English. So I think 
it was the 63rd journal when I decided that I want to give each of my journals a number. I saw that on several other YouTube channels. Um, yeah, some um, junk journal creators are doing that with their journals. So each journal has a number. So um, I gave all of my real journals a number as well. Um, and when I made this journal and sent it to Susanne, I suddenly realized that I have forgotten to um, write the number or to stamp the number. Normally I stamp that to a space where you can explore it. And um, then I have asked Susanne if she can stamp the number into my journal. And she has done that here on this little cute tag. And I'm just thinking if I should make such a tag or a similar tag for each of my future journals because this looks so cute. She has, ah, she has put so much effort into this little tag and this is, I think, way more cute than just stamping it. So this gives me lots of inspiration. Perhaps it's some inspiration for you as well. So let's put that back here. And here should be the second pocket that she has created. Looks really, really cool. Also with these little pearls. This is so cute. You can play around with those. Really, really cool. And here again, we have this crazy color. Until now, I don't know if I like this here in my journal, but we will see. I have to live with that now. It is there. <laughs> but that's, of course, also... Um, the idea behind this blind date journal um, project that you can perhaps get some things that you have not expected that you perhaps also don't like in combination with the other things but you have to live with that if you um, are willing to do this uh, this project with someone else so here's one of those kringelige karton croquetten <laughs> This looks really cool. She has put this little metal charm element here. A really cool idea. I don't know if she has made this by herself or if she had that in her stash, but it's a really cool idea to make something like this by yourself, I think. I think I have to order some um, heavier wire to try that out. Really cool. And here she made this tag where I had expected that she um, makes three tags in three different colors. Um, I had written that to my menu for her, but she has combined everything in one tag. And this also looks really, really cool. <sighs> yeah, so um, by the way, if you have missed those videos, um, that Susanne has published on her channel about making these elements, then please check out the info box. There's um, the playlist listed for you um, so that you can check that out and yeah, watch what you have missed. Then just realizing that this color totally has changed. I have this in my mind totally different than it is here now. That's crazy, that's really crazy. Don't know what happened here. Okay, so here we have the next Kringelige Karton Krokette. <laughs> and this is so crazy as well. When I see this, this extreme gold, I don't know if my camera can catch that. This is so bling bling. I can't explain that. I normally wouldn't put such things in my journal. But she has positioned it here on this straw paper so um with such a feeling that this totally makes sense to me now i mean if i would journal here with a dark pen that would match this little guy that she has put here into the middle of this flower and this would totally ma make sense this color uh, i know this looks black to you but it is really dark blue uh, matches this dark blue here. I don't know if she has thought about that, but perhaps her emotion has told her to glue that here. For me, this is really incredible um, to have that there because I wouldn't have done that by myself. Never. Never in my life. And 
this is a really cool thing to experience so if you have the chance to find a partner for such a blind date junk journal project then please please take this chance and try that out with someone else and exchange your journals and try to make the same experience like we are making here at the moment okay so i think that's it she has put no surprise in my journal so no i don't have a surprise why not <sighs> better no surprise than with a black woody pen <laughs> okay so let's go here let's take out this so i think this is my last menu if i'm not wrong ah yeah here is my um letter i don't know why she hasn't um taken this for herself perhaps she has made a coffee uh, coffee <laughs> a copy yeah a, co a coffee perhaps as well um so this was my last menu and here obviously hopefully is the new menu yeah so um this says the menu for our second meeting uh for the starter she wants to have a tag with a sweet uh curry compot uh what's compot in english i have to check that with my translator i don't know this english word here um for the main course she wants an austrian yeah ein topfgericht it's a one pot meal i don't know if that's an english word but that says everything um in germany as well as in austria and in other countries mm, there is this kind of mm, meal that you put everything in one pot and then in the end after you have cooked it it's ready and she wants um something like that out of um an envelope österreichisches eintopfgericht aus briefumschlag stoff und knöpfen okay so this one pot menu shall be made out of an envelope some fabric and some tiny buttons and for the dessert she wants a mixed um thingy with flowers and fine liner i have a hard job to translate that but um, yeah let's see okay so in this video after i have thought about that a little while <laughs> i want to show you the starter so this thing here with the curry I will just translate this word here with my translator so that I can tell you that in detail. So now I have to think about this, how I can create that. And then I will be back and I will come up with some crazy ideas, hopefully. <laughs> See you soon. Okay, so let's do this. A tag with a sweet curry compote. The translator says... Kompot, the German word kompot is compote. <laughs> I hope that this is right. So I have decided to um, create my interpretation of this starter of this menu a little bit different. So I did a different interpretation for my German video already. I have a page here um, in my journal that I will show you in the end of this video and I also will explain you the difference between what Susanne actually wanted me to do and how I did it, how my interpretation worked. And um, for this English video, um, of course, I didn't want to make the same thing, but I found, I think, another cool interpretation for this thing. So I want to make a tag but I want to make a tag that is inside of my journal that is bound um, into the signature. So that means I want to use this page to make my tag out of it. Um, but I want to leave the page in the signature. Um, of course, you can also take a separate piece of paper and make a tag out of it and later on put it in a pocket or something like that. But I don't want to make a pocket here for this project. So, um, and I don't want to glue my tag into my journal later. So I have decided that I want to try something out. And I have to say, I have never done that before. So let's try that. Um, I'm just folding this I think until here <sighs> <laughs>
fold this over to the other side so that this later on can still be some kind of a flip out or we could also glue this here and here to have a little tuck spot here on the back of this tag. Um, and now I have this and of course we will need something now that has this shape of the tag. So um, let's cut the corners there on the top. I mean, let's try to cut the corners <laughs> like we would do it if we would make a normal tag. So like this, and then I take this, turn that over, and now I'm wondering how I can cut here. So I think I have to hold it like this and then make a little line to see where I have to cut. Then I will just do it like this, cut in here. And now I have to take this little thing out. I'm just tearing that. Ooh, works not so well. Uh, okay, so that works not so well. I have to be careful to not um, cut into my thread here because this is unfortunately the middle of this signature, but I think that worked. And I think now <laughs> it already looks like a tag that is inside of the journal. To make that pop out a little, little bit more, I think we can um, distress the edges a little bit. And I think we're going to use something really dark, this walnut stain, for example, instead of a vintage photo. Okay, so let's use this strange paper that Susanna Hess gave us to protect the other page. I don't know for what I shall use that, but I think for this distressing thing, it's really helpful <laughs> to don't get the distressing to the other side. Okay, so the problem is I can't get my distressing here. How can I manage that to get a little bit of distress ink into this little fold there. <coughs> Perhaps that can work with a really dry and hard brush. I have never done that before. But let's try that. What's that paper on my ink pad? Don't want to have that there. Okay, so that works not so well. That works not so well. Hmm. What can I use for that? Perhaps um, we could try to use this sponge. To get that in there. Not so easy, not to say impossible. Hmm. I don't like that. Okay, so what about just going? Yeah, why not? I'm just going in here and blend that to the other page here. Why not? I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Okay, so let's try to... I mean, that's not the focal thing here on this project. Let's try to get a hole here to the top, where a hole normally is when you make a tag. Uh, <laughs> Luisa, what are you doing here? <sighs> Like this. That looks cute. Okay, so I will just go over this with my brush as well to make it a little bit more vintage. 
and I think I would like to add a protection ring here so I have these here I've distressed those with some um, distress oxide ink and some stamps and that stuff so let's put that here also perhaps one on the other side but I think for that I have to glue this down first so let me turn this into a tuck spot really quickly okay then you can just glue this little thing here and we have a nice back side as well <sighs> okay and now I would like to write something here on top of this tag and I have decided that I want to write this a little bit different than I would normally write something into my journal and that has a reason um, let me try to explain that so sometimes I think we are struggling with what we can journal. Um, I mean, what we can write into our journal. And many of you have asked what to do with a junk journal once it's ready. I mean, if you have put your signatures together and have um, sewn them into your journal, then perhaps you are decorating your journal and you're working with papers and some artsy stuff and that uh, kind of project. Um, but what to write into your journal? And sometimes that's not so easy. Um, it's f also for me not so easy to write into a journal. That has different reasons. On the one hand, I don't like my handwriting so much. And on the other hand, this um, process of making art in my journal is journaling for me as well. If I decorate a page, if I make a pocket, a tuck spot, a tag or something like that, that's junk journaling, journaling for me as well. Um, I don't have to take a pen or a pencil and write something down to have the feeling that I have journaled in my journal. And perhaps there's a way to have the feeling of writing something without writing something. So I thought about why not just scribbling around a little bit and have the feeling of writing without writing anything. That's strange, I know. So I will take the tag this way and write in this direction because that matches um, my idea of this project a little bit better. Of course, you can also write in this direction like you would normally lay the journal to your table. You would write in this direction. I will show you that on my other page um, that I made for the German video later. And now I'm just starting scribbling without anything in my mind. I don't know if you can imagine that, but this is really relaxing. I mean, now the camera is recording. It's a little bit different feeling for me in this situation, in my reality at the moment. But um, when you do this alone, this can be really, really relaxing and really meditative. Um, and I really enjoy this. I mean, my handwriting, if you would like to call it like that, looks totally different than my normal handwriting if I write something that you can read, if I uh, write real words. But um, I can be happy with my scribbling, even if I don't like my original handwriting. And why do we have to think about something that we want to write why not just enjoying the process of writing? I mean, <laughs> does that make sense to you? I don't know. So let's add another line here. 
and I have to say you have to practice this scribbling a little bit as well I think in the meantime I really like my scribbling but I had to practice that that it looks like this um, this is also a really cool thing if you want to make your own ledger paper for example perhaps you have followed um, this Defemoramba series on my YouTube channel in December that was a collaboration with 49 Dragonflies and there I made my own ledger paper um, and I've done the same thing with this scribbling and in the meantime I made some more papers of this and I realized that it really helps if you practice this um, until you really like this yeah I would say flow of this writing Okay, so since we have this, let's take a look back here to this menu. This says we shall do something with curry. And I thought, why not making a structure paste out of some curry and gesso? So I have this curry powder here. And I have some gesso. Where is it? Here. <laughs> so I've just decided to yeah try this um and i've tried that out with the in the german video um that i've recorded before this video so i have a little bit of an idea what is going on here so i'm just taking some white gesso some of the curry powder and this smells so great it's really really fantastic <coughs> then I'm taking a palette knife, as you can see, it's already <laughs> a little bit used. And I'm just mixing this up a little bit. And when I did this for the first time while I recorded the other video, um, I realized that this gets a really into a really light yellow. And that's not what I want. This is still, I think, a little bit less curry. As you can see, this is really some kind of pastel and I don't want that. I want to have this curry um, color. So I take some more curry. And now the problem is that this structure paste can get really thick and a little bit too thick and too yellow. I mean too pastel yellow. So I am taking a little bit of coffee with this pipette thingy here and put that on top to make it darker on the one hand and not so hard um, and not so dry on the other hand. And this will give me a really cool color. Hopefully I can get the same color like I got in my German video. Until now it looks not like it can happen, but <laughs> this is still really thin. That was perhaps a little bit too much coffee. So let's add a little bit more of the powder. And if someone tells you that working with coffee in your junk journal smells really good, of course, I agree. But please try to make your curry texture paste. <laughs> it's so cool. This smells so, so, so well. And when I made this for the other video, I thought... If you would make a recipe journal or a cookbook journal thingy, why not trying to use different spices or herbals and that stuff to make your structure paste? I don't know if that will smell like curry in the end. I can't um, tell you that because at the moment everything here in my room smells like curry. I can't put my nose to the other page and um, find out if the page itself smells like curry. But <laughs> I thought it would be a cool idea to mix some other structure pastes as well with, for example, um, chili or, or whatever or pepper or something like that. That would be a really, really cool addition for a recipe book, I think. I don't have one, so <laughs> I think I would sit for the next few days. Um, if I had a recipe book, then I <laughs> would try that out. But yeah, I don't have one. <laughs> so let's take this. So I have um, used this for the other project to make some dots here and there 
I'm just thinking if I shall use the bigger ones here, that could also look great. But first, I think we will put a little scrap of something here to make the background a little bit more interesting. So to break this scribbling a little bit, I think otherwise that could be a little bit too much. Um, this one here, for example, and then I have two stamps, postage stamps that are laying there that I have taken out for the other uh, project um, on the other page in this journal. But I think perhaps we can use those here. <clears throat> this is, um, I mean, I have searched for postage stamps that have a similar color like curry. So um, this would fit really well, I mean, with the colors also. And this is really orange, but I I like this, especially because here's a butterfly. Because for my focal point, I have planned something with, with a butterfly as well. <sighs> here's the butterfly on Barbara's paper. My focal point will go somewhere here, and here's a butterfly as well. Shall we put that here to get this irregular triangle that Barbara always is talking about? And this one here, yes, I think that's good. It's a little bit hard to decide now because I have no idea how this will turn out, but let's see. If we put that here, then we can Will the big dots be too much? Let's try it. Louise, try it. You will never know if you don't try it. Okay, so I have to decide how much I want to go over those stamps. And I want to have this. I try to line up the edge of this stencil with the edge of my tag so that the dots get straight and not weird. This looks like you could eat it, <laughs> but please don't try that. Okay. Lift that up really carefully. Ta-da! Oh, I love it. <laughs> I think that looks really, really great. And I'm just thinking, um, of course, I can store this structure paste in a glass or something like that. But I'm just thinking, why not putting some of those dots here as well to make a connection to the other page? Perhaps not too much or the smaller ones here or here in this area where the black dots are. That could look great. Only a little, little bit to get a connection to the other page. Not too much. I think that's great. That's really, really great. Okay, so now we have that. We can put that aside. And now I will just try that with my heat gun. But before I do that, I would like to spritz some coffee here and there. Um, I think that could look great. <laughs> some, not everything. to get this some, yeah, some kind of grunge to this spread here, like so. And then I will just dry that with my heat gun and then I will be back. Okay, so this is not totally dry, but I just realized that I have this cup here on my desk and that I want to make some coffee marks as well. Um, I did that on the other page also, so I'm taking my cup and putting that here into my coffee 
and just placing that here for example to also come to this music paper so that it looks like here was a cup of coffee and if you lift that up really fast you can get some really interesting marks as well um, here that doesn't happen but I think you can get that on some of your pages let's try it here can you see that makes this cool effect here I want to try to get that on this main circle here as well let's try that like this for example so that it looks not so regular and now <laughs> I really will dry this and another cool thing that I've just found out where's my cup uh, that you can do when you have made those coffee marks is take your cup and clean uh, it from the coffee and I have also some white gesso here so don't care about that it will get back there in a second so clean your cup so that it is dry and that no, uh, no coffee can uh, can come here to the frame and then you just take it and take some white gesso and put the cup into the white gesso like this you can do that really irregular and then you can just go over this thing that you made uh, with the coffee first and try to get that really irregular as well so that you don't have a full circle here that makes it look way more interesting and I think that brings out those those coffee marks in a really interesting way and of course you can also only take the, the cup and make such marks but where perhaps here oh that looks great <laughs> like this for example okay so i think that's great and then i want to have some white splatters here and there as well and i have this palette here with really strange ingredients <laughs> But I have some little bit dirty, dirty but white gesso in the middle there. And I will just pick up the rest here. Mix it with this thing in the middle. So that it is not totally white. Then I will spritz that here and there. To give this a little bit more interest. This background. And especially here where the black is we can lighten that up a little bit I think not too much but I want to have it a little bit whimsical Whew. okay so let me quickly dry this again okay so here we go and I just want to mention that those dirty splatters are from today on my absolutely favorite splatters I don't know if my camera can catch that, but here, especially here on this rosé um, kind of music paper, this looks so cool. This grayish splatters, can you see that? That's so cool. I don't know if my camera can can bring this original color to you, but I think like like this, it's in reality as well. This is so cool, and also here on the tag, that gives it so much more dimension, even if those splatters are nearly invisible. That looks so cool. <sighs> I'm really happy that I found out <laughs> that it's a good idea to splatter dirty gesso. I mean, here, on this black uh, line here, or this brush stroke, it looks also really interesting because it's not too white. It's not the same white like this paper is. And also here in between, this gives it so much more interest in combination with this coffee brown. <sighs> Fantastic. Okay, so now I would like to take this die-cut butterfly 
and put him exactly here. And I'm really happy that my plan with those three butterflies is going uh, to, um, you know, work. And I realized that I have a fourth butterfly here, but ignore that. One, two, three butterflies here. Um, but I'm just thinking if we shall put him here directly to the, nearly to the middle or a little bit more like this so that we can see the black scribbling a little bit better. I've also tried to coffee dye those uh, butterfly die cuts. Mm, this is another one, but you can imagine what I want to say, I think. But this is not enough contrast, I think. It looks too whimsical and too confusing for the eye. So I thought this one would look great. He's a little bit slim, more slim than this one. This is, yeah, this kind of normal shape. I also have this one. Oh, this would be great as well. But no, 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 no. I want him to be a little bit longer. So I think this one that I have chosen before is the best. There's also this smaller one in this die cut set. This die cut set is by Tim Holtz, by the way. I will link that down below in the description box for you. If you are interested in getting that, you can find it there. Shall we overload this tag? No. That would be too much. I think that would be too much. We would need a third one that this would make sense. So I think we will go this way and glue him down somewhere here. But I'm still not sure if I want to put him right to the middle or a little bit more to the right. So that this wing can peek out a little bit as well. Let's do it like this, so that the scribbling is a little bit more visible. And now I'm taking some glue and glue him down only here in the middle. Just pressing this down for a while. And then I would like to take my dirty gesso again because I don't want to have him completely white. This page, this grid paper is white as well, but not as white uh, as this white of the butterfly is. So I'm just taking a bit of this dirty thing. You can also take, I guess, dirty uh, water of your, your paintbrush water, uh, this water where you clean your paintbrush. And I'm just going over this a little bit, especially here on the edges of the wings and here in the middle a little bit to make him a little bit dirty and a little tiny bit dimensional. <sighs> I'm a little bit excited how this will turn out. And then when I have that, I want to add, <clears throat> oh no, first I want to add a flower die cut here on this side. That's not part of this task. I mean, I have to make this tag, but I want to have those both pages or this tag and the page a little bit cohesive. And I have decided that I want to put one of these flowers here. This is by Tim Holtz as well, this die cut set. I will also link that down for you. Um... Is that a good idea? Yes, I think so. We will put that here a little bit higher than the butterfly, but still in these yellow dots. So let's try to glue that down. Ooh, that's a little bit difficult to glue because of this structure paste underneath, but I think we need a little bit patience and then this will stick there. If not, I can still take a stronger glue. <sighs> this is not so easy. 
comes off here on the left side it's really good but here it's a little bit difficult shall we cut that off why no we will leave that here um, I'm taking my dirty gesso again and so I'm going over this little thing here this little flower here and there to make a it a little bit dirty and then when we have this I would like to try to give the butterfly some kind of a shading I have here some interesting an interesting mixture so this is a little bit of this crayon a little bit of golden watercolor and water and i also have another mixture here this is the, just my curry structure paste mixed with some golden watercolor and some water and i want to first take this as you can see if i um go around here oh there's <laughs> here's a little bit uh, of um sorry this is just dry acrylic paint that was in my palette before sorry <laughs> don't care about that so can we glue that down somewhere it's only acrylic paint it's only a nice coat of acrylic paint can we glue that down somewhere louisa don't make strange experiments that looks really cool but yeah okay so let's go on with this plan i will first take some of this curry mix <coughs> excuse me and i will put that here under the butterfly now i'm taking the this black mix here to get my shading way more dark okay so i think this turned out really really great the only thing that i want to add is i will take this thing that I used for the shading and I will just spritz that here and there around and perhaps a little bit on top of the butterfly and perhaps a little bit here to make a connection to the other page but mainly in this area here and we can also add some bigger splatters of this here as well I think Okay, so I will let, let that air dry, and while that dries, I would like to take this menu card that Susanna has sent me, and I will cut this here, and cut this starter piece, it's just distress that a little bit only with the rest of my ink that I have on my tool here only a tiny little bit so that it looks not so yeah cut or <laughs> strange okay that's not enough <laughs> sorry that's not enough I think now I have it and I really like when I see dried flowers I mean real dried flowers in junk journals then sometimes they have this little piece of tape where they are obviously taped down to the page and I would like to try to take this little piece and imitate this kind of tape and I think that looks really cute here and I also can later on remember that this was the starter for this blind date menu. I think that looks cute. I will just glue that down with some 
picky glue and perhaps we could crumble that a little bit here eh? perhaps I should have done that before I glue that ah uh, oh no Okay. Not so easy when you still want to read what it's what it says, but I think I've managed it. That looks really cool. That's great. That's great. Um Stop it, Louisa, stop it. <laughs> okay, so I will just dry that. Okay, so and then I think we need something here on top. And I'm a lucky girl. Susanna has made this menu tag with two of those little fabric thingies here. So that I don't have to search for one in my stash. I mean, it's not uh, the problem, but <laughs> why not taking this thing here? So that she can oh, realize that we have used this. So let's decide which one looks better or shall we use both. But I originally thought to use the top of this menu card as a page tab. White or this color. We definitely need the white one because then we have also... A third white element this this and this I think that would look great so let's try to attach that but how that it is not too short in the end I think I will just put that through here and then I will yeah I will take a bit of glue here press that and wait until it's dry and then this will stay there Whew, hopefully okay so oh, let's go the fast and easy way <laughs> instead of my original plan let's just staple it Here we go. Wonderful, just wonderful. So we have to save that and that for later. And I would say this is my starter of the second menu here in this cool journal. And I hope you like this. I really, really love all of those details here. And by the way, if you are interested in having the papers from 49 Dragonflies shop, for example, this here in the background and also the music paper and nearly every paper that you can see here during this journal series, um, you can find the link to Barbara's shop down below in the description box. And there's also a discount code. With that discount code, you can get 10% um, discount to your order if you want to use that. The information is down below in the description box. And now I would like to show you my other interpretation of this starter of the menu. So as I said, I have done another interpretation, something that Susanne probably would not expect, that the tag is made out of the page here. And on this page here, I've yeah done a totally other interpretation so it's a little bit tricky to explain because it has to do something um, with the German language so um, when you say a tag in English then you think about something like this this tag shaped piece of paper um, when you read the word tag in German then you would say 
Tag. So it's der Tag. Like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and so on. That are Tage. The week has seven days. Die Woche hat sieben Tage. So seven Tage is seven days. So I thought about um, turning this word tag into Tag in German and then making a page about a day. And that's the reason why I've stamped here Mittwoch. That's Wednesday in English. And I've also scribbled here, and that was also the idea of this scribbling, like I would scribble in a diary on a special day, on a tag. <laughs> so this is a page about a day with a curry compote that I'm eating out of a cup, because a cup is easy to draw. And so I've decided that I want to put my curry compote into this cup. And I've used the same techniques like I did here with the tag, but as you can see, it turned out totally different. And I've thought about um, making this same thing in, also, uh, I mean, for my English video, but then I thought, no, I don't want to have two similar pages in my journal or two nearly the same pages. So I thought about another interpretation and came to this idea. And what <laughs> I want to say with this is if you try to find a partner for such a journal, then I promise you, you will get ideas that you would probably not get without this journal swap thingy um, and some of you have told me that they have problems with making a whole journal and send that to someone else um, so um, you said you can't participate into such a blind date journal project but I think you can also exchange such a menu only the menu you can could even email this and then um, interpret make your own interpretations of this menu on a blank sheet of paper on a, I don't know on a music paper or something like that you don't need a whole journal to experience this blind date journal uh, emotions I mean you could also um, exchange that per email you, you could also write here my menu for you blah 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 and then um, the other person do is doing the same for you you exchange that and yeah then you can do it even on the smallest piece of paper and even if you don't have a whole journal you can be creative and you can do something and i think that's the main point and this thing i would never be able to do without this blind date journal idea i would never have come to the idea to mix curry with gesso to make the structure paste. Never in my life. Definitely not. And also the combination of the butterflies and this extreme structure is something really new to me. Putting a tag into a journal without that you can't, I mean, in a way that you can't take it out. Totally new for me. So please try that out. I hope you like this. And of course, I hope we will see in my next video when we are <laughs> creating the main course. That's something really strange. I have to find some good translation for you for this thing. Um, and I have to think about what I want to do here. So see you um, when I create the main course of this menu here in my journal. I hope you liked it. Thank you very much for joining. Stay creative. Stay healthy. Healthy. <laughs> Stay healthy. <laughs> See you.